So what does this mean for the MCU? We know we can't count in non-MCU characters. So we know for a fact that the only characters in the MCU who are as powerful as, if not stronger than Wanda, are Loki and Doctor Strange. Yes. Steven doesn't have, even after going against Dumamo, I come to bargain. Even after that. <laughs> Sorry. That was a great impression. He filled my heart, though. He doesn't have the so But, and this is the intriguing thing the Loki that we are going to see in the Loki series is not the Loki we know. And that's the thing people keep forgetting. Yeah, he's, he's not the Loki that we've we've grown with over the last ten years. This is a different Loki. This is a Loki who had just finished being tortured by the other, by Thanos, who got his hands back on the Tesseract and bounced. That's a different person. He is the he is he is more powerful than Wanda just based on longevity. Yeah. And power set is very similar. She doesn't have the shape shifting ability, but she he does ha- he has shape shifting along with the ability to change reality. Now the question is does he realize it or not? Because in comics, our Loki in comics didn't realize that he could change reality until the most recent run of Loki. He didn't realize that he was shaping reality and freaked out, justifiably so, because he realized that his flights of fancy were actually changing reality. And he's, he got scared and was like, holy shit, oh God, oh God, oh God, what am I doing, what am I doing? So, what does this mean for the MCU? With those three characters in play. Like, I don't think... I I think Falcon and the Winter Soldier are going to lay the groundwork for the on-the-ground heroes. Yeah. But I think Loki is going to lay the groundwork for the cosmic heroes. And the ones who can actually change reality as we know it. So, what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to throw it to Allie first. And then Mary. So, for the MCU, even after Wanda, I'm still waiting for their big jab of a mutant to come in. Whether it is a Disney MCU movie-verse. Um, there's been discussions of Wolverine, of Cyclops, and with a certain Miss Marvel coming out, I still hope there's going to be a rogue. Um, hopes and dreams, but I still can't cast her. And if you cast her wrong, I will castrate you. So with that, <laughs> hopes and dreams after this is... Wanda is a villain. She is going to be a villain, and that's going to build up for a Doctor Strange battle. Um, I foresee him putting her in some sort of a place, and the MCU wanting to possibly bring her back because they've already constructed her as like a, I'm not a good guy, maybe a good guy, but Doctor Strange is going to handle her. Do you think she's going to be put in a mirror dimension? Where her powers are contained and she can't destroy everything. Because we've seen her consistently just wreck people's lives across from from her introduction until now. Just absolutely destroy people's lives. Do you think that that Steven will go because Steven is a more of a bleeding heart than he likes to think he is. He doesn't have the ruthlessness of a Loki or a Steven or a uh, Tony. 
And all in and all honesty, MCU Tony is is much more of a bleeding heart than comic book Tony. MCU Tony is soft in a way that comic book Tony is not. Do you think that? But Loki does not play. No, you're a threat. He will neutralize your ass one way or another. So do I you think, think I, I think Doctor Strange. I don't necessarily see Doctor Strange that mm. but that could be a, oh sugar palm trees that could be an also interesting introduction of maybe she could have a collar on her again I don't uh, know uh, that's the thing I don't know if she needs to be rehabilitated it and somehow go to proper therapy, not Agatha Harkness therapy. therapy, where she walks you through your trauma and does nothing to help you. <laughs> Which was funny, I'm not gonna lie. But, but I, don't know, no. I don't know if locking Wanda up and putting her in a straight jacket or a cage or in a collar of some sort help. help because that's already happened to her on multiple occasions within the MCU. And it doesn't help. It just makes matters worse. Yeah. I don't want her to be a villain. She is consistently. But I like, I think it's, and I think a lot of it is because of Elizabeth Olsen's portrayal that I like Wanda yeah. a lot more than I ever have in the comics or in the cartoons yeah. or anything else. Exactly. She makes her, especially with my own recent losses and WandaVision, it makes her very relatable. I understand that grief and I understand that trauma. I've been there and I feel for her. So I don't think doing yeah. things that would just keep her on the wrong path and just make her lash out and make her more of a villain are going to help in any way whatsoever. And I think that for me, and that for me is the thing is that having gone through, we all have gone through traumatic shit in the last two years. Um, so there's an empathy with the character while at the same time going it's not okay that you then hurt other people yeah yeah there needs to be a good balance because locking her up hasn't helped letting her have free reign to try and sort through her own shit hasn't helped there needs to be a a cohesive balance of the two and we haven't seen that yet and do we trust the mcu to give us that Probably not. And that's the problem. <laughs> Consider how they've treated a lot of my favorite characters so far in the last 10 years. I do not trust them at all. I think they're just going to keep doing a blanket forgiveness like they do for all of their characters. And that's and the my that they do. Literally the only characters we've seen in the MCU to face consequences for their actions are Tony, Loki, and Luke. Luke Cage went to jail for some shit he did not do. I, I can't say that. Jessica, everybody in the Defenders felt received consequences for their actions, but is that canon anymore? That's the thing. The, and that's one of the things, and that, I kind of feel like that's the biggest thing. The Netflix MCU is so good. It's, it's so, so good. If they don't get all of them back, I'm so mad, like, yeah, for real. Like, I, I, I want John every single Netflix party. That and that I and this is one of the things I've said repeatedly. Wanda Maximoff, unless they want to have a real conversation, Wanda Maximoff cannot exist in the same plane as Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Because Wanda Maximoff, unless we have a real conversation about the shit Wanda does, there is no way that Jessica and Luke wouldn't kill her on site. On sight. That shit would be on sight. Okay? There's no way that they wouldn't 
and she and they're immune to her powers because of what they went through with Kilgrave. And as Ron pointed out, Matt and Danny would not approve of the killing, but they wouldn't stand in the way either. Because they know what Matt what Jessica Matt is Matt is too much about the law. And Danny is too much of which is one of one of the things that they did as much as people apparently hate Iron Fist, which is stupid. But one of the things they did really well with Iron Fist is show that Matt, that Danny was stuck at the trauma of when his parents died. Yes. And he was still a child. Even though he had these fantastical powers, even though he grew up in this con- convent for all intents and purposes, he was still stuck at the, the death of his parents. They made Matt sympathetic while they made Wanda, who has same similar trauma, not a great person. They did a better job with Matt on in the television series than they did with Wanda in, in making you... His naivete is clear. Matt is still... I mean, Danny is still a child. He's still a little kid. He's yeah. still stuck in where his trauma was and thinking that people are basically good. It never occurs to him that people are bad people. Because yeah. why would they be? His parents were good people. Why would they not be? And the monks who took him in were good people. So why wouldn't everybody be good people? Yeah, he's very naive. He's very naive, but they make him rounded. And on this show, they did a good job of showing why Wanda was stuck at the age of her trauma. Because she really is. She's still... Orphan home that could have groomed her well. She was passed off into, hey, you have superpowers, and we're going to make them bad. So, yeah, she had a little bit different upbringing. <laughs> she, she's <laughs> never been able to process... And then trauma at all. Her parents died. Her country was still in the midst of a civil war that was ongoing for what, 10, 15, 20 years. Then, you know, her brother dies. She can't process that process that because she's thrust into the Avengers initiative and like bullshit training or whatever to like become partially she partially is responsible for her brother's time. Like it's she's never had a moment. They're not going to have therapy that helps out with any citizen. They're going to tell you to get through it. And I'm sorry that your house still has bullet holes 2,000 years later. Um, that, and you wonder why villains are made. Because they can't deal with shit anymore. And they don't have any sort of outlet to tell them, hey, this isn't healthy. This is to do it. And guess what? You wind up with characters like this in a comic book because it happens in real life. These are fictional characters that guess what? They can pick on real people and what they've been through. It's another reason why you feel for that person, but at the same time, you know what's wrong because guess what? You have conscience. Exactly. Exactly. And I think, I think going forward with the MCU, it for me as much as I'm I'm looking forward to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I super am. Same. I a I don't trust the MCU to handle people of color, and Not Anthony well. Mackie being the lead of Falcon and the Winter Soldier so makes bad. me concerned. I'm, I'm so, so worried. Concerned. I'm feeling. I'm ready for it, but at the same time, my level of anxiety is so high. You guys, I'm. I'm worried. I'm worried for him, and I'm worried for Emily Van. MCU handles this right. They will be able to pull off the rare feat of having real conversations within a comic book movie. And that's something that we haven't really had. Batman versus Superman tried it, but they failed on every level. Mm. Um, we don't talk about it. We, we need to do a whole other podcast. That There's, shit. A whole <laughs> <laughs> There's a real conversation to be had about radicalization. 
about people trying to do good things and ending up hurting more people and trying to do the right thing about a bunch of white people going into brown countries, brown and black countries, and fucking shit up. And facing zero consequences. And facing zero consequences. And it's happened multiple times since the start of the MCU, and it's getting oh. tired. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought of a fabulous segue for the MCU. Okay. Um, and if they cast any sort of white person, it should be demolished. They need to bring in the Shi'ar. Like, they... That's possible. I mean, with Guardians of the Galaxy, it's free. It's that is possible. Yeah. Why not? And that could... I'm 100% down with the Shi'ar. Tire... X-Men spectrum, but also again, keep at least one movie in outer space, because you're going to have Princess Lalandra, you're going to have an entire different nemesis. Could be interesting. And at the same time, none of them, at least in the comic books, I don't think, are whitewashed. Yep. Because they are Seen as an Asian race in space. They're still gonna whitewash them. Oh, I'm sure they will because they've already whitewashed it's quite a few up. characters. They'll still but, do it. But if they actually do bring them in, it'll bring it on a whole nother level of the magnifying glass. And and again, if you bring in the Shia, or you have Princess Lilandra, who could actually destroy the Scarlet Witch, who could destroy a lot of them, depending on which, again, which era she's in. But Princess Lilandra almost destroyed Apocalypse. So, like, there's some very tough. No. To you. If they're not the lead, they are a sidekick. Yep. They're there for comedy. They're there to co-sign whatever their white friend is doing. And it's just it's never good. So I'm nope. very I'm very yeah. worried. Going into the future of the MCU and how Wanda could affect things later on, I'm concerned about Falcon Winter Soldier. Because all the movies are connected somehow. We know that they do that. They interconnect things. They weave yep. stories. Even if they don't seem connected, they're connected in some way. So I'm worried about the future with what's going to happen with Sam and his journey, because we already know there's going to be some racist bullshit with John Walker being Captain America over him. I already, I'm already calling it. That's what's going to happen. He has to fight to be Captain America. Oh yeah, I'm that's already calling it. That's what it that's is. He has to fight to be Cap. <laughs> and then we have the things with Loki, and there's going to be a lot of shit going on with him. He's DB Cooper, and he's his own alternate timeline and. Maybe we'll see Heimdall. Maybe we'll see Thor and Odin and a, a thriving Asgard again. I don't know because it's it's all up in the air. But I'm very concerned going into Phase Four. I have hopes. I just I've learned to not have my expectations be too high. I've learned to keep them very low so that I'm not disappointed because more often than not. I'm consistently disappointed with how the writing presents my favorite characters. And that's and the thing. That's the thing. And I need them to actively, the same thing I've said with, with Warner brothers, which is on the, we're doing a plug, the Patreon podcast. Um, <laughs> I need them to hire more people of color and women and members of the LGBTQA community mm -hmm. because Loki yeah, is a very yeah. tricky character because he's canonly um, sexually ambiguous. It's canon. He's a woman as, as literally the um, there's a whole section of, of Loki of agent of Asgard where he goes, he shapeshifts from female to male to a fox. And he, lets, he says, it doesn't matter. 
what form I am, I am always Loki. And in Thor and Loki, The Dark World, there's an entire line which sets off old man Loki, Walter Simonson Loki, about how he is accepted by Thor. I mean, by Odin. My son, who is also my daughter, who I love unequivocally, no matter who they are. And that is a plot point because old man Loki, Simonson Loki, flips the fuck out because he was like, I never got that acceptance. When it was me, how come this one did? I'm scared. I think until they... I feel like they were trying to make Wanda... They they are showing us her villain, villain <clears throat> origin story in this movie. I mean, in the series. But do they have the balls to go forward with it? I feel like they were trying to make Wanda seem... If you've never read the comics, you've never watched the TV shows, if you don't think... If you haven't thought of Wanda as a villain in any way whatsoever before this and you're sympathetic towards her, I think that they accomplished the goal of making people empathize with her and seeing... And I mean, I've, I'm I'm a little guilty of it too because at the end of it, I don't see her reading the dark hold as her having some mystical master plan. I see her as like... Agatha said, I'm in this book, I'm going to take it, see what it says, and learn what I can, because apparently I am a witch and I have these powers beforehand, and maybe it'll help me get some control, because she establishes she doesn't understand her powers. I forgot the point I was trying to make. I think that they're, I don't know if they're trying to set her up as a villain or not. I kind of hope they do, I because she is the strongest person. They've already said consistently that at this moment, she is the only one who could have taken out Thanos by himself, by herself, single-handedly. No one could have stopped and her. And so called an airstrike. And because yes. he would already kill Loki. He had to kill all his people. The only person who would have been able to pull it off other than her was Loki. And they say he snapped mm-hmm. Loki's neck because Loki was trying to save Thor. Yeah. They're literally the only two characters who we've seen who had the capability of killing Thanos just straight out are Wanda and Loki. So it's interesting to me that they made those two the next two series. Yeah. I'm curious to see how it's series for the multiverse. Before we get the multiverse of madness, those specific series, I feel like Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to establish the -the on-the-ground heroes, and I feel like it's going to tie into Spider-Man. And I feel like Loki and WandaVision are going to tie into the overall mystic galactic situation. But, in any case, I hope Elizabeth Olsen deserves all the awards. I hope she gets the the Emmy and Golden Globe nominations she deserves next year. Because, damn. Damn. She She really showed case her range. She's so good. She's so good. Um, I hope that Paul Bettany gets the recognition he deserves because he's a much. On the one hand, it's on the level, but on the other hand, it's a much more subtle role. And subtlety doesn't always get recognized. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that he gets all the nominations. I hope that if for no other reason, the I've come back from the snap scene gets Tiana Paris the nom. That was so good. Wonderful to see. Or in what, 10 minutes than the entirety of Spider-Man Homecoming did? Again, I never saw the the movie. I'm just wondering what happened. Just because you had people who disappeared from planes. As much as I wanted to love Spider-Man Homecoming, it's not good. Um... (laughs) The cast is fantastic. It's just not a good movie. Um, And that scene, that entire episode did more in that episode to explain the ramifications, the true ramifications of the snap and the reversal of the snap than the entirety of that two and a half hour overly bloated movie did, in my opinion. Um, And it was all Tiana Paris' performance. It's she was all great. 
her so, panic, her fear, everything. It was yeah. genuine. You were right there with her the whole yep. time. I almost feel like this show has to be watched in context with Loki. Do you guys feel that? I really, I, I like you said, I think they're going to be connected. We don't know how yet, but there's no way they can't not be connected because they are the two magic, the two two of the three main magic users. And so there's got to be some way they're connected. In it's you. She's going to be in Multiverse of Madness. This is going to be Loki in his alternate timeline where he escapes after the Battle of New York, doing who knows what to the timeline besides being D.B. Cooper, for sure, and hanging out with Owen Wilson. I don't know. Like, there's got to be some kind of connecting thread. I'm very curious to see what it's going to be. What about you, Allie? So, I'm going to take a different stab at it. Um, Because, again, I'm still waiting for introduction into the mutants, because... Well, I... I I want them so badly. Disney paid a lot of money to be able to do that. And with Wanda, you can bring in a lot of characters. And with that, a lot of villains. Like the Brotherhood. Yeah. So, I'm not saying that's going to happen. But eventually, we're... They're going to run out of super crazy villains. And especially with the time era that we're in right now, you're going to want some basic ass villains. And the Brotherhood can bring that, which is a perfect parallel to what's happening in real life. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my little weird theory. Um, I think Wanda is going to continue to be a villain. Her brother is going to be an on and off villain, just like her. Do you Um, think it's going to be Aaron Taylor Johnson, or do you think it's going to be Evan Peters? I hope it's neither. I really like Aaron Taylor Johnson so much. He just endeared himself so much to me as a person, if for no other reason than the fact that he shot a interviewer down during, I, and I'll link it in the in the uh, comments where an interviewer tried to shit on Elizabeth Olsen for being a hero in the MCU, but not a hero in Godzilla. And he sent the interview going, actually, she's a hero in Godzilla too because she's a nurse. And then he spent the entire interview doing this. I do remember seeing that. And I'm like, if Aaron Taylor Johnson is just a gift as a human being. He is a gift. And I'm like, I love him so much. As a person. I'm, I'm um, going to be partial to either of them because I also love American Horror Story. Like, yeah. Um, honestly, at this point, I bring in another character altogether just to... Throw. I think that's the only way to fix it, because we both, we all love either one or the other. They both have so the only way to fix it is to just bring in an entirely new character and person to play the character. If you've known Quicksilver as a comic book character, he has been yeah, very much both. Um, also in the middle, and oh dear god. Like... I, I would want to kill him. So yeah. they, need, they need another. They need another actor. They need clean slate. It was, trust me, it was a fun moment. I There was not a silent in the room when it was like, oh my God, quick cover. Because like, that was like probably the only good part of that X-Men movie that I blocked out from my head. Because trust me, I blocked out most of them. Um, He was the best part. It was, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm still mad about Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver being murdered. I'm still like to this day, Are I'm still shot? angry. Like, and I, like, it was a stupid way to die, but I get it because of the contracts with Fox. Like, yeah. Fox still had the rights, so there couldn't be two at the same time. I get it. I'm that was so angry to die to this 
day the shit of all the ways lips. to kill him that, that was that not it out? is that a cop out that yes that yes cop? it was is that that is that, I'm that so like angry. especially since he's oh, such an amazing actor oh and i what didn't you know don't get me started speaking i, of, I think we started I, Jim. I Next thing we're going to do for Drunk Review is the Monsterverse. I don't know if you want to be a part of that, uh, Mary. But Mary. we're going to do the Monsterverse. Um, so I'm giving you guys a preview. But we're. I think the next movie is Godzilla vs. Kong. And since Aaron Taylor Johnson is a part of the Monsterverse. And I freaking love the Monsterverse because it's so... Oh, Godzilla! They did such a good job of consistently tying each piece. They actually did a better job than the MCU. They really well, did. That's sad to say. Considering they it's been a better job time. of unexpectedly... Oh, shit. Wait, Kong is tied to Godzilla? Holy shit! Okay. They did a really good job of it. So, speaking of Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson. Um, so, I guess we're going to wrap it up on... <laughs> monsters! You know, yeah, monsters. That they lean into... Let Wanda... Let Wanda be evil. So we can get a redemption arc. Because I feel like WandaVision is her villain origin story. More than Age of Ultron was, because that's a mess. And there's so many things about Age of Ultron that make me want to mur murder someone. The least of which is Steve fucking Rogers going, my teammates don't tell me things, while looking Tony in the face knowing for a fact that his parents were murdered. But... That's right. another podcast. <laughs> that, like, right? That's another podcast. <laughs> so, I want, hopefully, this is leaning into her being a villain. And she grows from it and becomes a better person. Because the best villains are the ones where you empathize with them. Where you understand. Where you understand why they're a villain. To me, those are the absolute best villains. Where you absolutely get it. I get why Loki was a villain for the first half of the MCU. I get why Killmonger. I get Zemo. Hell, I get hell. I understand the pain that they're in. Let Wanda be evil. I don't know if I and get hella. Redemption yeah, art. to be not good. <laughs> like, uh, hella was banished for no... Hella was banished for... Allowing, helping Odin do colonial, oh, nice. and then oh, oh, he he control. and then once he lost control of her, he banished her, <laughs> and then erased her from history. Just, so I, that's not okay. okay not. That part's not okay. It's all of her other stuff that I'm just like I can't empathize with that part. Oh, she, 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 but think about this: she was banished for thousands of years, and she went fucking crazy. Because he was trapped in a different dimension in isolation for thousands of years. Either way, she was Odin, We need to do a whole podcast on how Odin is a terrible fucking father. He's oh, the worst. Want to talk about He's that. awful. No wonder no, Loki is so fucked up. He's like beta version of Hela. He's the so best. He's the best. He's of the MCU. Odin was a dad. Literally. None of the events of the MCU would happen if Odin would just be a good father. Like he really, he really tried. He was like, I messed up with Hella, but I have a new baby here that's a frost giant that's gonna have the same black and green coloring that I can do it right this time, and he still fucked up. Fuck it up. <laughs> But here, hold on, real quick. I have a son. His name is Aries, and he's got love for Loki's. I want him. Let's just be keep fucking up, kids. It's fine. He is the Bruce Wayne. Aries. 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 
Is- Odin is, oh my god, Odin is the Bruce Wayne of gods. He keeps fucking up kids. <laughs> and I think oh. it's all gonna be different. Oh my god. Yeah. Wait, I just blew my own mind. So on that note. <laughs> well, then you might have Hercules, so they're like half spring. On that note, this is Belle. <laughs> <laughs> it's Allie. And that's Mary. I'm and we're Mary. here from Pop Culture Uncovered. You can find us at PC Uncovered on Twitter and Instagram, popcultureuncovered.com, and Pop Culture Uncovered on Facebook, Tumblr, and Patreon. Oh, no! Virtual reality fight! Yes. I want to give a special thanks to all of our Patreons, patrons, rather. Who has made this podcast possible? You guys are amazing. We love um, you. Kat Defoe, Patricia Mitchell, John Shabel, FEG. Thank you guys so much. You have made us it possible for us to do these podcasts every two weeks. We love you. Everyone, please wash your hands, wear a mask, wear two if you can, and stay six feet apart. Because we would actually like to see you at some point this year in person. I miss we people. You. I yes. miss you guys. We miss, we miss actually interacting with you in person. We <laughs> love you. Look forward to merch from PCU very soon. Be safe. Wash your hands. We love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> I feel like we covered all the subjects.